Hi, my name is Vincent Simone. In today's lesson, I'm gonna show you the number one reason why your one-handed backhand will never have any spin. Let me explain. A one-handed backhand without top spin is nothing more than a slice. The number one reason for failure to get massive amounts of spin on the one-handed backhand is failure to keep the racket head above the wrist at contact points. A lot of people have a loose and flimsy wrist at contact points and they go about the one-handed backhand as if they're opening up a door or they see, you know, 12 year olds and uh, maybe even, you know, high level players are hitting so fast, top juniors, and it looks like they're opening up, you know, before the hit, but what you're really seeing is the opening up in the phase after of the recovery. What you wanna do, okay, to stop flailing your one-hander, hitting side spin, getting defeated by the ball, is getting your wrist in the letter L for leverage position, keeping the racket face in front of the hand. The number one place where people fail to do this power and leverage move is during the racket drop of the one-handed backhand, where instead of moving our body up and down like an elevator and keeping the racket above our wrist, they opt for the easy route and they go like this. And they think that getting under the ball just with their racket is sufficient enough to produce top spin, except every time the ball's gonna end up going in that direction. It's gonna go exactly where we don't want to, okay? You gotta get athletic. It's gonna take a little bit more effort, but I promise you the reward for a little bit of hard work is a lot better than what happens if you don't do it and you take the easy route, okay? If you live life the easy way, life will be hard. If you live life the hard way, life on the tennis court will be easy. So watch me here. When we go, we get down to the height of the ball, okay, moving our body like an elevator. We're not bending our back like we're gonna go golfing or do mini putt, okay? And when we do this, it's very important that it's here above the hand because the most important phase is gonna be, boom, right here, where you can see my racket does not fall below this imaginary tabletop. Just changing this one thing will give you massive amounts of leverage on your one-handed backhand. Also make sure that you don't pop up and you wanna spread your wings to stay sideways or else you will not be able to hit on a straight line. Forgetting about the non-dominant arm is also a no-no. You're gonna stick it out to stay sideways and stay on balance. Feel like you're a surfer. If you can show me a video of a surfer surfing with one hand and not falling in the water, I'll buy you dinner because I reckon most of them have both arms up like this to stay on balance because if they don't, they're gonna tip to one side, they're gonna fall in the water, they're gonna eat waves and become shark food, okay? Or a giant squid is just gonna consume them, okay? Don't fall victim to the ocean, okay? This is your ocean, it's also blue. I guess it's kind of ironic, but you wanna make sure that you spread the wings. Now the swing path, once you've implemented this power move, okay? You wanna maintain the letter L through contact as well, but it's also important that we don't swing like this and flick out. We keep the wrist up and we follow through all the way to contact. I've still got the letter L, we hit and freeze. And when we go to swing, it's inside to outside. We wanna get massive amounts of radius. That's where our power is coming from, okay? We don't wanna flick it open. We wanna feel like we swing away from our body up a hill, all right? And the racket's gonna go 180 degrees from the point where we start back here and the point where we finish, okay? The more radius you can get, the more power. The best of the best of all the rest, get a straight arm on the one-handed backhand, okay? Their arm is not bent at contact point. That's another common reason of failure. So when we do this, we get maximum leverage by going away from our body. Also, when we turn, we get more than sideways to stay sideways or else we're not gonna get any power when we do stay sideways, right? We don't just wanna turn to here. We gotta take our racket and our shoulders as a unit past our hips, okay? And you'll know if you've hit the check marks, if your front shoulder is underneath your chin, okay? Make sure not to lay the racket face open when you do your take back. Okay, the racket falls parallel 
with the baseline. And then from here, right, heel to toe, stay low, inside to outside, swing up the hill, don't open up, okay? Using these things in combination with the number one power move for leverage, you should be able to regain control and confidence of your one-handed backhand. If you like this video, I recommend taking the next step and going into my online course because it takes what we've learned and it builds on it. And we'll show you how to hit with power and consistency on the court for the rest of your life. Also, if you're interested, you can read my book. It's a tennis self-help guide for adults and the link is also down below. In any event, thank you for tuning in, tennis patience, and use what you've learned to modernize your game. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Ciao.